Hi, I'm Scott Wonder from Wonderwoods. Welcome to another Wonderwoods video. I just got this batch in here and actually a little bit more of what I'm going to call barn wood. It came from a barn. It was found by somebody else and then they sold it. I bought it. And I'm getting ready to open up the packages and I know from purchasing a lot of wood like this and finding a lot of wood throughout my career what's going to be in here and how while I'm excited this thick walnut, it's probably going to be less exciting after I get into it. So I want to bust this open and I'm going to show you what to look for or what to expect when you find stuff at a barn find or at somebody's house that's for sale that's not doing this professionally and what to look out for. So let's bust this thing open. So when you find salvaged lumber like this, I'm going to call it salvaged. It wasn't salvaged by the people that cut it, they just cut it. But salvaged by me, I expect that it's going to be pretty low grade. And there are several reasons why I know it's going to be low grade. Reason number one to not expect much out of this lumber is that it was cut from whatever logs they had. I'm sure they got some walnut, they were excited they had walnut and they cut every walnut they could find and every piece of it that looked like it was going to make a board, they cut and they kept. Reason number two, that I know this probably isn't high grade wood, is because that if anybody's cutting their own wood, it's very precious to them. Meaning that they're going to keep way more than you would normally keep to try to sell. For example, look at these edges. There's still a good amount of weighing on here, meaning bark right here, etc., down here. If we were cutting this log and to cutting this lumber to sell, we're going to edge that a lot tighter than that because nobody wants to come in, mostly nobody wants to come in, buy walnut, pay for all this sapwood, and get a weighing edge. This board, if we were milling it to sell, should be much narrower. Down here, and down here, at least an inch and a half narrower. Reason number three that I know the wood's probably not that high a grade is because the people involved, meaning the owner of the logs and or lumber, and most likely the person cutting it, probably, or this is a good chance, that they are not a professional sawyer. Meaning they might have a sawmill and they might be cutting wood for a living, but it doesn't make them a professional sawyer in the sense that they're cutting for grade. They are probably not cutting for grade, they're probably cutting and doing whatever the customer tells them to do. So, they are not going to go in and for example, cut a good chunk of log off to get one high grade board because the customers are busy watching them and telling them to do something different. So, when you have a customer who may not know how to do it correctly, and you might have a sawyer who also might just be a person that owns a sawmill but doesn't know how to exactly cut wood for high grade, you're going to end up with wood, a stack of wood, but not necessarily high grade wood. The fourth reason why I know it's going to be lower grade than I'd like it to be is because it always is. Even wood that I cut, I'll make a stack like this, it'll look nice, and I will forget exactly what the grade is and how it looks, and in my mind, I'm picturing it as a giant stack of walnut, 100% not free, and thinking that it's perfect. And I will tell you that every time that I go and I unstack a log, or unstack boards, it's always lower grade than I think it was. While I'm unstacking it, I'm going to show you the things I'm looking at and explain what makes it lower grade. This board actually looks pretty good, but to make this a high grade board, <coughs> there's a big crack here. So basically be trimming down to here to get rid of that crack. This one's split back to here. Cut there. And it's got a lot of wane on it, meaning the edges with the bark. So this board really needs to be trimmed here and there. Wow, really low grade. Here's the pith of the tree, right here. All the way down. This side doesn't look terrible. 
still serviceable as a lower grade board. This is an interesting surprise. That's a piece of cherry. Slid in there. And this one's really high grade. There's no knots at all on this one. This one was cut great. That's an exciting find. I'd rather be walnut and be that nice, but it's a really good cherry board. This is where you get a chance to really see what I'm talking about when I talk about low grade. Here's the board they saved. It's all sapwood and a lot of bark. If I was cutting this board on the sawmill, if I was cutting it, if I was cutting the log to get to this piece of wood, I would have gone a little deeper so I had more meat here before I tried to take a board off. This is where I was talking about where they try to get as much meat as they can for their customer. And in the end, make a lower grade board. This is actually a pretty good looking board as far as grade goes. But as far as sellability, it's pretty tough because it's cracked almost the whole way. This crack goes to here, that crack goes to there. We'll still be able to use it, there's still material in there, but as far as selling it for a high grade board, it's not going to happen. There's some decent wood here. Down here, there's two knots right here. You trim that end up, you trim this a little bit, you trim this sapwood off, you got a decent board. But you also have probably, you know, 25% of it that's not that great and that probably need to be trimmed off. So you can tell it came from a, uh, a wiggly log, probably a branch higher up on the tree. This side's pretty good. But if you want to get a decent long board out of this, you have to edge this more, you have to edge this more, you're going to end up with a board like that wide. Oh, I know. Reason number five is the thickness. A lot of barn lumber that you find, if it's cut one inch thick lumber, they cut it right at one inch. And the two inch lumber is cut right at two inches. Well, we cut four quarter lumber, which is one inch lumber technically, at one and eight. That little extra bit of meat makes a huge difference. When it's cut rough at one inch, there's a good chance that all your boards are not going to come out to three quarter. There's going to be a good batch of them after you straighten them out and plane them, they're going to be too thin. I don't usually buy one inch thick lumber because it's usually cut at one inch thick and I feel like that's a little bit too thin. This two inch thick stock, it's exactly two inches I think, it's cut right at two. It's a little thin for me honestly, but since it's thick we can still get you know one and a half inch material out of it for sure um, and maybe every now and then we'll get a one and three quarter out of it which would be the normal eight quarter thickness. This board, it's not terrible. It's definitely not high grade. There's not, not, not extra sapwood. Not that great. Wow. Look at that. That piece of lumber is pretty good. This board. It's walnut. It is walnut. But obviously it's all sapwood or 90% sapwood. And it still has a ton of weight on it with the bark and everything. If I was sawing this log, I would have probably started a little deeper. This probably still would have been in the slab if I was cutting it. And made sure this board is a little bit deeper in the log, get more material. It's fine, it's sap when you can still use it, but I'm being very generous on what they're trying to keep. There's a lot of wood here that should have probably been trimmed off. And it's clearly not very high grade, you can tell. There's knots and swirls all along it. Still okay. I can still definitely sell it for more than I bought it for, but nothing to write home about. Reason number six, why well, you can't expect it to be high grade when you get a find like this, is that there's a good chance that the best boards were already used. This side has pretty much sapwood, but it's still pretty nice. It's very long. Unfortunately, it was dry with the big hook at the end. I'm probably actually going to shorten this down, probably trim this off here, and trim this off about here. Here's a good example of just cutting whatever logs you have. This log, and I don't blame them, I would cut it too, but 
This log has been sitting for a long time before they cut it. This outside's all crispy and falling apart. The sap was rotten on it. So to clean this up and get the good usable wood out of it, again, we're gonna be cutting a ton off there, maybe even down to here, I don't know. There, there, there. Only. That's a 50% board right there. So I can get to be reasonably high grade, but I'm gonna lose 50% of it to get there. So this board's probably about exactly what I expected. Pretty nice, pretty straight. Try to trim all that off. Trim it down to here, clean that up. Again, that's 50% board. This board isn't bad, it looks pretty nice. But, again, extra lane on both sides. It would probably be about that wide. And I've got several knots in there, all the way down it. It's in the one common range, as far as walnut goes. Not bad, totally sellable, but far from being clear. This right here, this is a good indicator, to me anyways, that the person that was sawing this clearly wasn't sawing for grade. They wouldn't be, you wouldn't normally be this close to the pith, meaning one board away, right there, with a nice straight pith. So this was a really straight log, straight pith, consistent log. So they could tell on the sawmill right away that they were getting close to the pith. And their boards are still, 11 inches wide, 10 and a half, 10. 10 inches wide, and they're down to the pith. If you're cutting for grade and really trying to maximize the grade, they would have been working down on this log getting smaller, and once they get down to a board that has the pith in it, that pith board should only be like six inches wide, meaning that they were getting good lumber off the other sides of the logs. This one shows me that whoever was cutting it probably just kind of squared the log up, got to a nice height, 10 inches in this case, and then just finished it up. Just boom, 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 done. Here, take your boards, get out of here. So this is cherry from the same cherry log we had before. It has several issues. One, it's not very flat and straight. It's not cut straight either. It's very fat down here. Very fat down here. And it's skinny in the middle. I'm sure this was probably their last cut. This was the last piece off the mill and it just was what it was. It was not flat and straight. And it's been dried not very good, so it's got a big hook to it. Though, otherwise the lumber is actually pretty good because it's still from that same log, which was nice and straight grain and a good log overall. So, though there's a lot of reason this board is bad, it's at least 50% good. Cracked all the way down. Not, not, eh. Eh. This is a very low grade board of which I'm probably going to get 50% of the wood. Anyways, you can tell, as we go through that stack, and I'm assuming all the rest of my stacks are the same, they're from the same place, probably equally mixed in. There are some decent boards, but there's some that are very questionable, not that great. So overall, I'm expecting to get 50% good wood out of that pile. And I think that's about right for barn wood. So my takeaway on this whole video, and the main reason I wanted to make it, was to let you know that generally, if you get excited about finding some barn wood, it's not going to be as great as you think it's gonna be. I have not found any wood that I've salvaged, and I've done a lot of salvaging out of barns, people's houses, especially after people die, they just leave the wood, etc. And I have not once ever been surprised to find wood that was better than I expected. It's always been worse. So, as long as you go into that purchase or that acquisition knowing that they have a real expectation of what's going to happen and in not being too high of expectation, everything will be fine. So thanks for watching and if you feel so inclined, please hit the little subscribe button at the bottom. It's going to help me out and make me feel better about what I'm doing here. I love to see the subscribers go up. It feels like something and I really appreciate it.